Scourge is here with another character who made his debut in the comics, and that character is Obelix. And according to label art, Obelix is going to throw a large stone at this guy, while Asterix rides that stone and uses Jedi mind tricks on this other guy. Awesome. Let's go ahead and take Obelix. Let's pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Obelix was published by Atari and carries a copyright year of 1983. It is based on the mega popular European Asterix character, which by the way I'm very unfamiliar with so please forgive me if I mispronounce anything. This game also is more common in Europe, although a small amount of North American cartridges were made, possibly for areas of Canada that had more European tastes. It was programmed by Suki Lee, who also made Math Grand Prix for the 2600, which I reviewed way back in episode 55. I guess Suki really liked programming game titles with French sounding words that ended in IX. The manual opens with the following, the year 50 BC, the place, a Gullish village near the Roman outpost of Totoram, Aquarium, Laudium, and Compendium. Here we find the last outpost of resistance against the legions of Julius Caesar. And who are the leaders of these indomitable fighters against the mighty Roman Empire? Who has the gall to oppose Caesar's will? Why, none other than the humble Meneer delivery man named Abelix and his small but shrewd friend, Asterix. Abelix is a single screen action game for one player only. The game allows you to start at any of the first four rounds. The goal of the game is to defeat all the Roman soldiers. Even though the game is named after Abelix, you actually control both Asterix and Abelix and have more control over Asterix. You use a joystick to move them around, pressing up and down at red foot bridges to move in between levels. If you touch a soldier, he will temporarily freeze, turning white with fear. While he is white, you can defeat him by pressing the button to have Obelix drop a large stone called a Meneer and crushing him. Ouch! If you don't crush the soldier in time, he will get angry, turn red, and be deadly to the touch. Asterix can also lose a life if a dropped Meneer ends up crushing him. From time to time, Obelix will be replaced with the village druid, Getafex, who will drop a pellet of magic potion. If Asterix touches it, he will become temporarily invincible, enabling him to knock off angry red soldiers. The game contains two types of soldiers, fat legionnaires and smaller centurions who are worth double the points of the legionnaires. Scoring wise you get anywhere from 10 to 1000 points for knocking off a legionnaire and 20 to 2000 points for knocking off a centurion. And as you'd expect, the scoring is shown in Roman numerals. If you knock off a red soldier, you also get an additional 200 points. You start the game with 3 lives and get a bonus life at 10,000 points, 50,000 points, and 100,000 points. If you clear enough soldiers, you'll move on to the next more difficult round. Graphically speaking, you have a nice opening screen, and the characters look pretty good, but the backgrounds could have used some more attention. Sound and music wise, the game has some pretty basic sound effects, but I thought the music was quite good. Family friendly wise, the game would most likely get an E for everyone rating if released today, although the idea of dropping giant stones crushing your enemies is pretty gruesome to think about. At the time I researched on eBay, including shipping, copies were pretty rare, with loose copies going for $51 to $60. So what did I think of Obelix? This is a pretty unique game and I thought the controls worked pretty well, especially considering that you're controlling two characters at once. However, it does take a little getting used to and it would have been nice if there was some sort of counter to let you know how many more soldiers you had left to defeat to clear a level. Also, I found this to be one of those games that grows old kind of quickly. Perhaps if the rounds were a little shorter, or if they added a few more wrinkles, it would have kept my attention longer. But as it is, I did think it was a unique game to play, but not one I plan on playing more in the future. So where am I going to rank Obelix? This one is going in the 120s, and I think it's only fitting it should go somewhere near Taz, which after some graphical changes was also released as Asterix. And I think I like the gameplay of Obelix just a smidgen more than Asterix, aka Taz. So how the one 171 games I've now ranked for the Atari 2600, Obelix is carrying a Meneer into the 124 position. Obelix is a pretty unique game, but it doesn't hold your attention that long, and it isn't worth the high price unless you're a collector. But that's only one guy's opinion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please click like and subscribe and follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. And check out some of my many other videos covering retro video games, toys, mini arcades, plug and plays, and more. At this time, I'd like to thank Grey Defender for supporting the show on Patreon. Thank you. you you too can help support the show, gain access to exclusive content, and be able to vote on future games I review by signing up at patreon.com slash gamer Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care and be careful not to get crushed by large falling stones.